This project is based in Kiruna, Sweden, which is within the Arctic Circle. The temperatures here have been uh, below freezing all of the time, except for maybe like one day where it hit zero degrees. <gasps> The stars really have to be aligned to make a successful flight. These flights can be quite long, so we start early on a typical day. We'll have our forecast team come in and they will just reevaluate the forecast that we did the night before and look to make sure that things are still going as we expected. Accurate forecasts are, you know, an integral thing to that what we are trying to accomplish during Caesar. We need to be able to forecast where these cold air outbreaks are happening, when they're happening. We discuss uh, possible flight plans for the next couple days, and we really just evaluate what the weather's doing. I just wanted to look into the aerosol conditions for the flight. Um, again, looking at we're going to look at sea salt concentrations uh, along with black carbon and dust. I've annotated our projected flight track. So this is Tuesday, uh, 12, AT, 12 UTC. If we're targeting a specific synoptic or weather, where should we heading for? That is really important for the mission scientist uh, on the plane or on the ground to make a decision. And then we have several plans about where should we go? What is the potential flight track? Which one do we choose? For what reason do we choose? At the same time, the C-130 is pulled out from the hangar and people go out to the plane to warm up their instruments. Then at about 45 minutes before takeoff, people start populating their seats and getting ready for that particular flight. When we're flying, we're trying to hit the science objective. What that means in practice is that we will ask for a lot of things that a commercial airliner wouldn't ask for. So we'd ask for climbs, descents. A couple flights ago, we were down at uh, 1,000 feet over you know, 76 north out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, sometimes we're actually seeking out weather phenomenon that a commercial airliner would try to avoid. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot more coordination that goes on from the pilots to ATC because we are deviating so much from what a normal civilian airliner would do. It's very, very unique flying in that way. Spiral descents and ascents, those are really weird to, to feel, but it was, it was fun. So I had some Dramamine before to help soothe the uh, motion sickness that I could have. So I had a good dandy old time. The guy that I was sitting next to, he it was not okay. <laughs> I think what's really incredible about flying on a plane like the C-130 is you are a team working together making measurements and actually seeing the data come in in the atmosphere in real time. So you're you're essentially flying through what you're measuring, which you rarely get that experience. It was monitoring the data and also taking any chance to look out from the window with lots of clouds and you know snow mountain covered by uh, snow and ice and really that's cool view. My flight experience was pretty exciting. I was the mission scientist support, so I took a lot of notes and pictures so that we could have context to the observations that we were taking. During the flight itself, there's continuous communication with the ground. We have a mission coordinator that communicates between the flight scientist and the pilots. There's the op center scientist that communicates via satellite. There is oftentimes a debrief. What have we learned from this? How can we improve our mission? How can we improve measurements? And, uh, you know, sometimes we have technical issues with the C-130 aircraft.
We didn't get quite as far north as we wanted, but we got over the marginal ice zone. We didn't get over the solid sea ice. That's as far as we could get with the uh, constraints we were operating under today. And it was sort of action-packed, especially there at the beginning when uh, I know you guys were very busy doing your calculations and Julie and I were very busy trying to think about what's the best way to deal with it. And I think the bottom line is I think it worked very well. Maintenance has to happen on the plane somewhere along the, the line as well. So we also schedule uh, maintenance days in between the flight days to make sure that people's instruments and the aircraft itself is kept in top shape. I've done other field campaigns in the Arctic and like Northern Alaska. So I wasn't sure how remote it would be or what the landscape would be like here. And it's been really fun. The people are super nice. There's some good restaurants and places to walk. We found a place that like is a library for checking out skis. So we all got cross country skis and we've been exploring the awesome network of trails here when we actually have time. And it's great for kind of a reset so that then when you come back, you're ready to hit the ground running. So I'm extremely excited to be here and see what it's like to work out in the field, just meeting with all kinds of different people and see what kind of things we can learn about our atmosphere. For me, one of the highlights has been getting to experience the northern lights and also these really magical kind of polar sunsets, which are just, the light here is so soft in a way that you don't see in other places. So it's been really fun being in this environment.